360 videos are awesome, but how do you make it in Blender? It's easier than you think. Let's find out. So here we have the default scene, but 360 is better when there's stuff to look at. So let's make a scene to... Alright, now that that's out of the way, what we're going to be doing is making a 360 video, like the type that works on your phones, or if you're viewing in a VR headset, it's going to be in 3D. To do all of this, you have to actually change the way the camera thinks. Now, you're probably already familiar with perspective and orthographic, but if you go over to the camera settings, there's a third, more mysterious option. That option is panoramic. Now, if we set our scene to rendered, and we go into camera view, we can see what we're looking at. This setting is also what you would do if you wanted to create a fisheye effect. But we're not making fisheyes, we're gonna be making this word, right here. And whenever you select that, basically what happens is the camera sees everything around you from the point in space that the camera is at. It's no longer just aimed at something. This in itself is almost everything we need. YouTube actually recommends an aspect ratio of 2 to 1. But we're gonna talk more about resolutions later. Anyway, after you get this rendered, if you tried to upload this to YouTube, it wouldn't work. It just looked like this. For YouTube to actually see and recognize it as a 360 video, it needs this funny little thing called metadata. Now to fix this, Google actually makes a free tool to be able to inject the metadata. So if you go to this link, which is linked below, you'll need to install Python first, and then download the master tool. Once you got that downloaded, this is what you'll see. And it's a tiny little box that has three buttons on it. <laughs> So you just load in your video, and you enable that it's spherical, and if you rendered the 3D, which we'll get to, and then you just hit inject. After that, once you upload it to YouTube, it will automatically be able to tell what type of video it is. But wait, we're not done yet, because we have another question that needs answering. What about the resolution? Now how high a resolution do you actually need? And the truth is I did a snowy scene on purpose so that you'd get these little high frequency details. Because even if you think your video is a high resolution, whenever you view it, either on your phone or on a headset, What's essentially happening is that your video is being stretched onto a sphere that you are in the center of, so the resolution might not be as clear as you think. And if you're doing a stereoscopic video, meaning you'll have both eyes rendered in there, the resolution will be cut in half. I rendered this example scene at several different resolutions, so you can see what these sizes look like in practice. I'd recommend a size in the middle to get started because these do take a while, but ultimately you can determine what's best for your scene. Now, if you want your video to be stereoscopic, meaning you have two different angles for both of your eyes, so when you view it through like a VR headset, it looks 3D, you just go over to the output settings, enable stereo, Enable stereoscopy, stereoscopy, stereoscopy. You'll want to make sure you're rendering both left and right, and down below, since we do not want to render this as two different image sequences, nor do we want to render in like a red-blue thing, you'll go down to stereo mode and select top-bottom. That's going to stack the two angles on top of each other, and then on YouTube or whatever the viewer is, it will just interpret the top and bottom as the left and right eye. Also note, if you do that, then you're going to have to put the vertical resolution in half, because stacking it is going to make the image twice as tall, but that doesn't work well with YouTube. And if you do a higher resolution, that might just be wasted render time anyway. So just divide the y-axis in half. Little side note, if this is your first 360 video, you might want to avoid the stereoscopy. Because once you do that, there's some more settings at play that could mess with the quality of the image. So things like the focus distance, or how far apart the eyes are. And depending on your scene, that could take some tinkering. If your blender scene is 1 unit to 1 meter, then having a setting of 0.06 to 0.065 for interocular distance is good. That's about the distance of the eyes. The convergence plane is the depth at which the image plane is in focus, meaning anything closer than that is going to look closer, or anything further than that is going to look further. So just keep that in mind before you commit to a big render time that you might want to simplify some things, and do some tests to figure out what's comfortable before you do a big render.